Oh gosh. Were you 16? Yeah, I think so, yeah. No, no, yes. I was 13. 13. 13, yes. Yeah, I think so. I was trying to work it out how old you were. Yeah, 13. Oh my gosh. So now you're 22, almost 23. Yeah, so it's coming up for 10 years. Yeah. So Emma, I know you've been a celiac for a long time and you are mm, healing and making things work. Hang on. Yeah, okay. Now she's this go. meeting is being recorded. Take two. There we are. <laughs> Hello. Hi again, Emma. So Hello. Emma, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Natasha? I'm very well. I said uh I'm just, I'm looking forward to listening and doing this uh, interview with you. And now I know it records and I'm really happy. Yeah. So <laughs> for me now, I, I've known you since you were 13 and I know that you've been a celiac and you were diagnosed from the age of 12. Mm -hmm. And from one era to another, you were misdiagnosed and they just let you continue being and suffer from being celiac. And it wasn't until you said, what, 12 years old, that you, you yeah, started yeah. to follow a strict celiac diet. And what would you say your biggest problem of being a celiac was? What was your, what was your biggest, how did it affect you the most? Uh, when I first got diagnosed, uh, right before diagnosis, it was nausea and fatigue, uh, mostly. Mm -hmm. Uh, but throughout from I was because they suspect that I actually had celiac disease since I was two years old but mm. I went on without getting diagnosed until I was 12 and I had a lot of like ups and downs sort of thing like I would have um, had a lot of stomach issues throughout my whole childhood uh, that just the doctors never really found out what it was and it sort of just went away for periods and then it came back and it was just on and off a lot, yeah. And what would you say was your biggest breakthrough when you um, got diagnosed and they told you were celiac? How, how did that make you feel? Uh, obviously, I hoped it wasn't celiac disease because I didn't want to not have gluten and I thought it was horrible <laughs> uh, they even fact that they were testing me for it uh, but at the same time it was sort of a relief just to be able to have a diagnosis and that there was something that was actually able to I was actually able to get better in some sort of way that it wasn't something even worse like something chronical that you can't really cure with anything so yeah. at least for me uh since it's celiac disease you can sustain it with having a gluten-free diet so in that yes. way it was very very relieving yeah so what would you say was your biggest breakthrough uh, biggest breakthrough would be really um like in terms of like gluten-free diet i would say it would be like finding um a gluten-free bread that really uh, really sat in my stomach and didn't feel like it had to come off again. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was a big breakthrough for me. That's and, good. I mean, so so then what made you sort of start baking bread, you know, because when I started following you again on, on uh, Facebook and you were doing gorgeous uh, recipes, which inspired me to start moving forward to help women at an older age hmm. discover the joys of eating gluten free for yeah. medical reasons or for health reasons, just or just wanted to live a better life. What yeah, inspired yeah. you to to start that up? That well, uh, it's it's really sort of like when you've had celiac disease for a long time and you encounter other people getting diagnosed and you've self been at the spot where like what do I do? How do I make these things? Oh, is my life completely going to be different because I can't have any of the foods that I love? You sort of feel like you have sort of like a duty to help other people um, who are going through the same thing as you were uh, many years ago. Of course, now it's a lot easier because there's a lot more products and stuff. 
But at the same time, it's nothing like actually getting your hands in there and trying to make something yourself and feeling that accomplishment of actually being able to make yourself delicious gluten-free food that I think often is better than the gluten-filled food, yeah. Yeah, I agree, I agree. And so with everything now, and you like started making better bread, have you made pasta? Yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Love That's making good. pasta. It's so well, easy. You, yeah, and what would you say is your favorite homemade gluten-free recipe? Oh, that's a difficult one but I think like the most one that's like really uh, that I just absolutely love is uh, gluten-free sweet potato gnocchi oh yes I know I love that one and Sigrid made a lovely sauce to go on it the seafood yeah yeah yes. yeah my yes. sister's incredible at making pasta sauces so yeah yes. we usually when we get together I make the pasta and she makes the sauce <laughs> Fantastic. I think we'll have to. So now, obviously, you are working towards healing your internal organs because over the years of going undiagnosed, it it's it's probably left a lot of scar tissue and probably the feelings of nausea still comes back up when you're not feeling good or when you run down. Do you get the nausea or do you... I, I get the nausea if I'm gluten, yeah. Uh, I get yeah. the nausea, but I more now have uh, problems with, like, diarrhea and stuff if I get gluten, more so yeah. than the nausea. Um, but my main issue has been after diagnosis is the short-term symptoms, you sort of, they sort of go away. And but the long term ones, they sort of stick around without um, they can be sort of hard to get rid of just with eliminating uh, the gluten. Uh, so for me, it's really been discovering that there is actually solutions to helping you overcome those long term symptoms, uh, because sometimes it's just not really enough. Uh, with just cutting out the gluten you just your body needs that extra little bit of help yeah so where did you source the ingredients from with um so the all things? the all the ingredients uh so i've obviously i've created a supplement a multivitamin supplement that is uh really here to just help us uh first of all get the vitamins and minerals that mm -hmm. Are often lacking in our diets and there's no such multivitamin that is targeted for our specific diet. I was going to say, how did, I was going to say, how did you sort of, um, did you do market research to find on the, yeah, see if there was I, anything out there for us? Yeah, I did lots and lots of research and I also contacted a lot of people and I also uh, obviously had did a lot of research on what sort of uh, vitamins and minerals that are often lacking in our diets and mm -hmm. what sort of other ingredients that can also further help us on our journeys. Because mm. I, I know we're never going to get rid of being celiac, but if we can make our life more comfortable and enjoyable and go for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, not, and, not, and not feel like a drama queen, you know, it's like... It's nice, isn't it? It's good. So would, would you say what was the main ingredients that you've put into the the vitamins? What was the main ingredients that you took? The used? main ingredients yeah, is it obviously... Not but it can aid and help. Yeah, yeah. No, so obviously, first of all, the uh, vitamins and minerals, which mm -hmm. is essential for a diet. And it uh, can sometimes be very hard to get all your vitamins and minerals on a gluten-free diet. First of all, because your intestine is damaged, so mm. it's not as good at, at it absorbing vitamins and minerals as it was uh, before you got celiac disease. And yeah. second of all, uh, gluten-free food is very over-processed. As you can mm. see, when you buy gluten-free bread, it's in some sort of vacuum package. So it loses a lot of its vitamins and minerals, and also gluten-free flour doesn't have the same vitamins and minerals as wheat contained or rye bread or sort of um, yeah, types of bread. Yeah. So 
by eating over processed food you also are missing out on a lot of vitamins and minerals so and obviously too much sugar and salts and yeah yeah and well, obviously, lots of you, yeah obviously if you eat um mm. uh have a diet with a lot of fruit and vegetables and fiber and those sort of things mm. you'll will get the vitamins and minerals from there mm -hmm. uh but at the same time, then again, your what I've found, I've got a, I think I've got a pretty good diet, uh, but it feels like you don't absorb it all, sort of thing, mm -hmm. and the vitamins and minerals. And I think that is because, as you mentioned earlier, uh, it's because your intestines never, even though they recover, they're never at the same sort of standard they were before you wow. got the disease. So it's really just sort of um, uh, just helping out your intestines that little extra by giving it something that's easy to absorb. And so I was going to say, is that why you you made it into a powder form, and so we can drink exactly. it? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Because if you have pills compared to a drinkable multivitamin, a multivitamin that's drinkable is absorbs or your stomach absorbs ninety eight percent of what it's given but if it's a pill it's um maybe 20 percent around there so it's yeah. ranges from three to 20 so the, the benefit of having the powder with the water it absorbs into our body better and yeah. so we actually we can actually aid and recover some form of normality a lot quicker than if we took a tablet yeah 100%. Okay. Oh, brilliant. And so what, what benefits now? So as um, sort of a recovering celiac and our bodies are starting to heal, how quickly would you say you would notice a difference after sort of taking the, the vitamins? How, I think, I think it's very, very different from person to person. Yeah. Depending okay. on sort of like, first of all, uh, how long it was since you were diagnosed and mm -hmm. also how damaged your intestines are and how much um, uh, and also of course your diet so yeah. um, it really depends on all factors really but I personally um, after a week uh, using it every day it really especially like my energy levels was yeah. so much better. Uh, exactly. That's what I think. I think my biggest concern for other people who are new to being celiac is how they feel mm. so drained and also angry and um, sort of uh, forgetful, you know, with the mind fog. And I spoke to a client the other day and her daughter's just been diagnosed and she's 45 years old. Mm. So for me, it's really important now to try and get the message to help her and to get her the vitamins and the minerals to people straight away before the damage has been well she doesn't know how long she's had it for but yeah. I just thought about how many people don't know about these things just to help them yeah As you say you know they cure you but if it can just resolve an issue of pain and give you some form of normality Hundred percent, and also it's uh, <laughs> yeah. when, when you've been gluten, it takes an average amount of three to six months for your intestines to fully recover. So it's mm -hmm. no wonder we get these long-term symptoms, even though after a week we feel basically back to normal, but then we yeah. keep on being bloated. We feel like crap. We feel yeah. forget like you said and we tired all the time and exactly. it takes so long for us to pick like for our intestines to recover that much that it is actually able to pick up all the essential yeah. vitamins and nutrients that it needs and it's not in attack mode on your body no so having that extra help uh to accelerate the recovery rate and also to keep it there and uh Keep getting the vitamins and minerals that you need. Yeah, uh, can be really, really helpful. Um, and where will um, and we can get those in the states now? The the, the vitamins. Okay, yeah, so they're, they're available. They're, they're available in the United States and also in uh, Australia. Yeah. 
Okay, so if I can put in the um, link, if, um, I'll add the link for the Amazon. And yeah. in, is it Amazon or Australia or is it another company in Australia? Uh, no, it's Amazon.com, uh, uh, but they also ship to Australia, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Just so we can put those in and people can click and buy. Because yeah, Because yeah. I think it would be, be brilliant. You know, it, it's not going to cure you. It's not going to get rid of it. We're, we'll always be celiacs, but it will make our lives better. It will make yeah. us feel better. It will make us our skin look better, our stomachs not hurt so much, we won't get so bloated. And hopefully our brains won't be so fogged. Yeah. <laughs> we'll look like this size and we'll look good all the time. <laughs> we're not doctors, we're not nutritionists, we're just celiacs and hair yeah. specialists. And we want to make sure that people look good. Because yeah. I think with the vitamins, it will help with the hair growth, it will help regenerate and, and get the blood supply because once the body's not having to fight against itself for me I, I'm excited about taking them because I know that my body's working twice as hard to all stay healthy yeah so that's the most important thing so Emma thank you so much for your time and I will put this into my course now and I know that we will be able to help other celiac women and it will be a breakthrough for us all to feel energized and happy and slim, gas-free, <laughs> without any awkward moments. So thank you, Emma. No worries. Thank you, Natasha. You're welcome. And I will speak to you 